G'day, Amber here from Gardentara.com. A couple of months ago, I took some video footage of a scale infestation on this coffee shrub. So I just wanted to give you an update. But before we do, I'll show you that original footage and then we'll show you what's, what the progression is. We can see some blackness on the leaves. Just there and through here. See the blackness? That is black sooty mould and that alerts me to the presence of some sap sucking insects and in this case it's scale. Can you see the scale on the branches just here, little green scale? Okay, so we're going to have a bit of a closer look, see what's going on here. So these are the ripening coffee fruits. Having a bit of trouble focusing the camera. But you can see here we've got scale on the on the fruit. And underneath the stem there. So when we have a look at this coffee shrub now, two months down the track, we're going to see that the problem has escalated. There's more scale. There's more black sooty mould. So two months ago when we took this footage, the scale was, la and the black sooty mould was largely around the base of the plant. But what we can see now is that there's more black sooty mould higher up in the plant and up in the canopy and on leaves. So in my opinion this scale problem has escalated rather than diminished. Okay so black sooty mold that we can see on the leaves can stop the photosynthesis process, can stop the sunlight from hitting the leaves and we can see just there we can scratch it off fairly easily so that's not a, a major issue uh, but what causes the black sooty mold is the excretions it's a sweet honeydew that's excreted from the sap sucking insects mold then grows on that excretion and it causes uh, black sooty mold what I want to know is are there any predators and there we have one look at her that is a lady beetle or a lady bird, whatever you like to call her. She's a key predator in our gardens. And she's going scouring the leaves looking for food. She could also be looking to see whether this is a good plant to find a mate and lay eggs and if she does her babies being voracious predators are likely to feast on the scale insects that we have here you can see the scale is now right up the top But you can also see that even with all that scale, the shrub is still alive. The scale is setting the plant back. And of course, it can be introducing other problems. There's a really covered leaf and black sooty mold in that. Scratch it off. So a scale infestation can introduce viruses to your plants, there's no doubt of that. Um, and people you know, like to immediately reach for different um, pesticides. 
I used to do that. I used to reach for pesticides straight away, but I learnt to just wait. Unless, unless the life of the plant is in danger, um, I would actually rather learn from the whole process. And what we can learn is this coffee tree has a scale infestation. Got lemongrass here. We've got another coffee tree. And there's no scale. We've got another one. And there's no scale. So these two young coffee trees are fine. That one's struggling. It's struggling for a reason. It could be nutrients, it could be water, it's most definitely water. These two get more water. Why? Because I've recently planted, when I say recently, a year ago, these native shrubs and I want them to grow up to cover that so they've been getting quite a bit of water and this is a slight del downhill run so the water has been running down to these two shrubs it's unlikely the water has gone past the lemon grass to this shrub so that means it's a little bit more dehydrated and it's getting a little bit less nutrients than these two. So that's probably why we've got a scale infestation. Not as much nutrients as the other ones, not as much water, but still fairly good growth habit in comparison. Fairly good. So I'm really not worried about the health of this plant right now, but I'm going to monitor it. When I see a plant with scale or mealybugs or aphids that people call pests, I no longer reach for the pesticides. I like to invite and allow nature to take a course and most often she does. We can see that this plant has been affected by scale for a couple of months now. Certainly the scale population is growing, but the plant's still alive. I'm not concerned about the health of the plant, despite the fact that some sap, sap sucking insects can transmit diseases like viruses. Look, that may be the case, but for me, it's more important to work with nature. And in order to do that, I need to leave a food source for the predator insects like your lady beetles, like your hoverflies, like our wasps, like our lacewings and myriad others, spiders, they will all eat these and if I were to have a pest free garden I would actually have very few predators because there's nothing for them to eat. What I might like to do is clear the root zone here of weeds, I might like to check the soil and you can see it's lacking organic matter and it's a clay so I've got a, a heavy clay at my place here so that needs some organic matter that's going to help this plant so a bit of organic matter clear away the weeds more mulch keeping it moist that's going to help this plant recover and you can see all the ants here that goes to show you that this is a breeding ground for ants which means it is too dry so I've cleared away the mulch and I've got pulled out the weeds and as you can see it's fairly hard clay soil. So these were planted about a year ago so a lot of the organic matter that was originally there has been taken up by the plant. So I'm going to add some organic matter and some nutrients. So in this bucket here I've got some mushroom compost. Uh, it's fairly alkaline. Actually, it's extremely alkaline. It's got a pH of about nine, but the native soil at my place has a pH of five. So they're going to offset. So to that, I'm going to add 
some blood and bone and I'm also going to add some rock minerals. I'm going to mix it in. I'm going to mix it in because I've got dogs and I don't want them digging up this mix and eating the blood and bone, which they will do if it's uh, not mixed in. So that mix is mixed in beautifully. Next I'm going to place it all over there, all over the soil here and then I'm going to water it in and cover it with a mulch. Okay, so there's our compost mix. Just laid around the bare soil as it is. Okay, so there you can see I've just added some mulch to the top of the compost and now I'm going to water it in. Now what I've mixed in the watering can is a half strength of soil wetter, an organic liquid soil wetter, a half strength of a seaweed based soil conditioner and a bit of fulvic acid and I'm just going to water that in on top of the mulch um, just to make sure the mulch doesn't create some sort of uh, hydrophobic effect. I might even add it to some of the leaves because the leaves do take in nutrients so given this plant has a bit of a nutrient issue and it's winter, I'm not going to burn the leaves by wetting them. There's really no harm in fol foliar feeding. So now I want to give the plant a good water because that soil was so dry and she's so thirsty. And I also want to water in all those nutrients because it's a fairly windy day here and I don't want the nutrients, any nutrients, sitting on top of the mulch and taking to the wind but I certainly want to give the soil a good drink reactivate the microbes encourage any worms back because it was so dry I want a moist soil I want those nutrients to be taken up by the plant and that should create an environment where the plant can create the metabolites to resist an ongoing scale infestation. So let's see how that goes. For more in-depth information, go to my new blog, www garden tara.com